Do you fish? No. You know, people who don't fish think that fishing is lazy or boring, but it is the complete opposite. There are a hundred little decisions to be made, variables to be considered, and you're never quite sure what made the difference. Did I cast too high, too far to the left? Did I reel it in too slow or, or, or too fast? Is the lure too shiny or too dull? Do I stay here or should I go over there? And you know it's not luck, but you do not know by how much people are predictable, unchanging, monotonous. They use the same language, they offer the same excuses, they make the same mistakes. People are endlessly disappointing because you hope they won't be. I knew that she would need me. I knew that you'd come here begging for help. This was all predictable, all disappointing. This is why I am fishing, because I am never disappointed out here, because I don't expect anything, because anything is possible. I can be hopeful out here, even in failure. Because I know if I just go out there around that tree, it might be different. Something might be different. Something I do might make a difference. Sorry about that. Hey, no problem. Let's uh, let's they get Jamie. Goodies. Let's get Jamie on here. That work. If I can find him. Hey, Jamie. Yes. Hey, this is Matt and Dave from the Outdoor Scoreboard Podcast. How you doing? I'm good. How about you? Doing pretty good. Uh, hope hope you're having a good little little time off after the last couple of events. I know it's been crazy since after I cast a lot of tournaments going on up there, but we really appreciate you uh, having some time to spend with us and catch up with. We've been wanting to talk to you all year. We've been watching you on the trail and <clears throat> watching uh, just, you know, pretty pretty amazed with your success. So we thought we'd get you on and catch up and see just exactly how you think your, your rookie season's going. Well, great, man. I appreciate yeah. it all. Yeah. So, um, you know, looking back at the first of the year, you made, you know, made a pretty good impression starting off and a lot of folks wondering who you are. Give us a little background for our listeners. David and I are – are based here in the south we're kind of kentucky lake guys uh, uh you know a lot of our listeners may not may not have been familiar with you give us a little background on kind of how you got started in fishing and, and like kind of how you came up through the through the ranks up north um, okay. yeah so uh i mean i started back in um you know i always fished as a kid and all but i started i did my first that like backyard tournament i guess at uh year 2000 um, and I, uh, I, I, it was like a, a weekend thing, you know, a Sunday afternoon or whatever it was. And, um, I had, uh, I, I was doing professional archery at the time. So 
so I was a competition shooter and I traveled all over and did all that stuff and um I got bored of it so I don't know one afternoon or uh one weekend I said well I'm gonna skip a tournament and go to a a little fishing tournament and try that out well I didn't think much of it but I went and I did it and uh I won the darn thing and it was like you know it was the coolest thing ever I thought I thought it was awesome and you could make money at it and this and that so I was absolutely hooked from that day forward and I just kept uh, pushing and pushing, like just finding any and every tournament I could possibly get into, um, buying videos, instructional videos, uh, magazines, you name it, I did it. I basically self-taught my, myself, and, you know, I just moved up from there, did clubs, um, did really well, just started, you know, a couple angler of the years, and then I moved to the BFL level. And from there, you know, I've got, oh, man, I think i got five AOIs in the BFL and, like, eight wins or I can't even remember right now. But And I just said, well, it's now or never, dude. Where are you going? So I tried to qualify for the Opens, and the first season I tried, I finished in 12th, and the second season I tried, I, I made it. So... Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> so you literally climbed out of a tree and just went to yeah, catch pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. I know uh, back in college or in high school growing up, um, of course, I did a lot of different things, did a lot of different sports and then got, you know, we duck hunted, we quail hunted, we and I bow hunted a lot. And, you know, that bow hunting archery is addictive. Even if you're just oh, target yeah. practice or, you know, doing competitions like that, it could Absolutely. be addictive. It's, it's a fun sport and really get your, really get your adrenaline flowing when you're up in a tree and you have to wait for a, you know, a big eight pointer to get oh. within, you know, 30 <laughs> yards to have a good shot. And, but how yeah. did you, how did you adapt coming from such an addictive, you know, sport as that to um, fishing? I think it really helped me. I mean, it's always given me the competitive edge, but I think coming from archery, it, it's it's headstrong. I mean, coming from competition archery, you know, 90% of archery is mental. So, you know, repetitiveness and, and remembering this and remembering that as you've already got the bow drawn back. And I, I think being headstrong coming from that really helped me going into the fishing end of it. Um, that's all. I mean, that that that's what I think, and I, I thought that back then. Like, you know, I can do this. Well, I can do that too. And I mean, I just like I said, I self-taught myself right after that, as absolutely as much as possible. So I went kind of crazy with it, and I never had anybody teach me anything or show me this or show me that. So um, I think that helped me a lot too. So. Oh, I think it's pretty cool that you kind of worked your way up. It seems like the younger guys nowadays think they need to start at the top to begin with, and then they get a rude awakening to find out that they should have stayed home for a little while and, and did a little more homework. <laughs> Some do, and uh, those, those guys are usually fed with a silver spoon. Uh, yeah. You know, mom and dad or family have that kind of money to to put into the, to the, to the guy, and, and, you know, it, it doesn't – it's not always the the best way to do it. And, and some might come out pretty darn good, you know. Um, the Lee brothers, Dustin Connell, you know, he just jumped in and he's doing really well. Um, you know, there, there's a few of them, but um, for the most part, yeah, you see a lot of them go back downhill because of the, you know, it's just money is all that is that gets them there. But I'm glad that, you know, I, I mean, I wish I had it too, but <laughs> I'm glad yeah, I came no up kidding. this way. It means a lot more, and I've worked hard for it, and I know when, you know, when I do well, I, I've earned it, and nothing comes easy for me ever. I just, I got to make it happen. So you put, you put everything in storage and started traveling. You went, you got the schedule and kind of went, to, kind of went and looked at these lakes a little bit ahead of time because you'd never. How far south that you'd been before you made the decision? South Carolina, I think. <laughs> no kidding. Wow. From, from New York, yeah. Um, I think that's, oh, it might actually be North Carolina. 
Uh, um, no, I did take a trip. That's right. I did do one out to Louisiana for nationals back when I, I qualified for uh, the nationals from the um, New York State Federation, the, the, the BASS Federation thing. I used to fish some of that too. So um, I did qualify for that, and I went to Louisiana to the Ouachita River. Um, and, and coming up back then, I forgot what year that was, but I missed uh, Classic by four ounces in that deal. So we had, we had our close calls back then, but it just never came through. That's just enough to keep you hungry enough, ain't it? It was, for sure. Hmm. Yeah, so Dave, yes, you know, sir. Dave just mentioned you, you packed everything up and made the decision. This is, like you said, this is this is the time. If you're going to do it, do it now. So, what kind of uh, what kind of uh, how did you start off preparing once you got saw the schedule and decided to to go to some of these strange afar places and these strange folks down here in the south? How did you? <laughs> what kind of game plan did you come about? Did you have a certain plan like I want to go test this lake out and try this or? Did you have a, just an open mind and show up for practice? Uh, no, I set myself, me and a buddy, um, I have one of them intelligent friends. So <laughs> we sat down and we, we actually went, I remember the night we went, uh, we were hanging out and we went over to a, a local drugstore and bought a, a calendar with great big old squares on it, like a big old calendar. And we went back and we sat down for hours and hours and hours. And uh, we basically made my schedule on that calendar that day and that night to the T where I was accounted for every single day um, throughout that season and taking into, you know, the travel time, the money, the um, the lodging and taking into consideration the cutoffs um, for each tournament and how to make these rounds. And we did it, and it was actually it came out absolutely perfect first try. So when I was ready to leave in the middle of December, I had every single day accounted for where I had to be at what time, and it worked. I mean, it it, it really worked right to the T for us. So um, I was, you know, thankful for that. It, it took a lot of thinking out of my my brain, you know, <laughs> I could concentrate on fishing a little bit more. And, and not worry about, well, I got to be here, I got to be there. And, um, it just worked out really well that way. So I plan on doing that again for next season for sure. So you weren't just literally looking for the lakes. You was, you know, doing some looking while you were there. So you had, man, that sounds pretty good. It's almost like you had a time budget. You had so much time to, to get things done, and that was it. Yes, I did. I made my rounds before. I got four different lakes in before our first event and then right after that first event you know i got another one in and then i got down to florida and then i got another one in and i got to texas and yeah it just it worked out perfect how often do so, you shake your buddy's hand and tell him thank you for that <laughs> that's a pretty cool deal. A bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. pretty, that's a pretty good friend right there <laughs> yes sir uh-huh he was a partial sponsor too so it was it was, you know, right up his alley. So he loves doing that kind of stuff. I like the the way you you plan that out. And uh, several guys there's that that you're fishing against. You know, they've they've been on tour for oh ten, fifteen, twenty, even twenty five, thirty years. Some of them, and I guess after a while, they get they kind of have a <clears throat> have a you know a little little routine built up, or they've got somebody that's helping them out, and they. But it's interesting to see how every angler is prepares in their own way as far as like like David said, budgeting their time, making the yes. most of every every day uh, as far as mental preparation, gear preparation, or just out, being out on the lake. It's amazing how yeah. everybody comes up with their own system. Yeah, well, yeah, it is you know preparing that you know the, the time and the, and the dime, you know that was my biggest thing. So keeping those costs down and, and keeping the mileage down and um, making sure that I did hit all them areas as close to cutoff as possible. Some of it didn't end up that way only because of geographical, but, uh, you know, just, just trying to get right up to that cutoff time so I can see the lake at that stage and, and then leave there for our 
28 day cutoff. That was, that was pretty important to try to do that too. And what would you say would be the, your, your most challenging lake or event so far this year? Uh, man, I'd say Okeechobee. Uh, Okeechobee and Ross Barnett really, um, I don't know, man. I just, I dropped the ball there. You know, guys were talking about the Florida deal, how it can bite you. Um, I heard about it, how weather can change and this and that. And, and honestly, I had a good pre-practice and I had a good practice right before the tournament. Um, I did lose a day. I had a breakdown. Um, I had to get towed off the water and I lost a day, but I still felt good about what I was doing. And man, that just felt hard. <laughs> and I didn't know how to adjust. Um, I didn't have the lure selection. I think I was supposed to have, um, the areas, the, um, I just, there's just a lot of different things that kind of fell apart there. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't like, I'm not a big shallow water fisherman and that's a shallow water deal. So is Ross Barnett. Um, I think those are, you know, my two worst finishes and it, it kind of showed, you know, if there's one thing I do need to work on for this coming season, it's a shallow water deal. Um, I think that's one of my weaknesses for sure. So what's what's your com- what's your wheelhouse? What's your comfort comfort range depth wise in? Uh, I mean anything offshore. I love I love fishing offshore. I love being able to get into an area and pick it apart and grind away like I did in Arkansas at Dardanelle. That was my deal. I was headstrong. Um, I figured the fish were coming to me and they were, and it just kind of started working and clicking and knowing my timing, um, throughout the day, you know, I, and just, uh, you know, the whole water rising thing at Dardanelle really messed me up. I really thought I could pull that win off, but, uh, you know, things happen that you can't control. So, um, just being offshore, I think gives me the confidence that there's more fish. I don't it's not so critical to weather change and, and this or that or lost fish and that kind of thing. So um, being able to read my graph and, and, and move around to find the sweet spots, and that's that's kind of what I did too at Dark Now. I found a couple sweet spots um, when everybody else was coming in and going out and trying to fish my areas, and they just overlooked some things. And um, So that that's kind of my forte. That's kind of what I like to do. Cool, I'm right there with you. I'm not. A, I'm not a big uh, shallow guy myself. I'd rather, I'd rather find them a little bit deep and a little bit more out and open. Yeah, anybody can beat the bank. I mean, exactly. there's a lot of bank beaters out there, and they do good. But you know, anybody can go down the bank and, and you know catch, catch fish for the most part. I'm not saying there's obviously guys that separate, but uh, it's shallow water. I mean, you, just, you know, you flip, you throw a. a, a Chucking wind constantly, which I can't stand. <laughs> I know. think I think I think it gets boring after like an hour. You know, yeah, you're pretty like, much just going through the motions. You know, like yeah. uh, I'm going to throw a spinner bait all day. Well, you know, just keep throwing it, reel it in, throw it out, reel it in, throw it out, yeah. reel it in. <laughs> and, and that's you know, I like a little bit of a challenge, I guess. But <laughs> you more you more of a, a dragon type guy then. Uh, yeah, flipping, dragging. You know, I didn't get to do any flipping at all, hardly, um, just the way it, it worked out. Um, so I do like to flip, too. But, um, yeah, I like to get off and get on grass lines and, and, and drag and, and, you know, football jigs, Carolina rigs, Texas rigs, um, that kind of stuff. <clears throat> We've also heard that uh, in your spare time you like to play a little poker <laughs> um, I, ju- I literally walked out of the poker room when you called at our local casino <laughs> well let me ask you this that's got you've had to have developed a, a few skills on how to read your opponent and david and i mm-hmm. we, like, we like to joke about uh you know the sandbaggers and what we call instagram insta baggers where they're they're sandbagging on instagram to, you know showing pictures of alligators and and uh, deer on the, you know, anything but a fish, and then you hear a little bit of dock talk when you're out there. How how does that skill translate over to fishing? 
I, I don't really pay attention to all that kind of other stuff. Uh, uh, you know, I really don't. That doesn't get into my head at all. I don't listen to Doc talk for the most part. I mean, it's, it's misleading. It's not your deal. It's not your pattern. Maybe it did work. Maybe it didn't work. Do you believe him? Do you don't? You know, so I stay away from it. I really try to, um, you know, except for the, the basic stuff, you know, are they shallow? Are they deep? You know, don't go, don't go deep. It's crazy if you try deep, you know, that kind of stuff. But for the most part, I don't. Yeah. Again, it's that mental part, mental thing. I think that's it. When they yeah. tell you, when they, when they tell you absolutely don't try it, that just makes me want to go try because I think they're lying through their teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Well, some of it's like, you know, you get into some real dirty water or something. It's like you're crazy to be offshore, you know. Your bike yeah. is shallow for sure or yeah. whatever. But, um, <laughs> you know, like Dardanelle, you know, deep fight. They call it deep fight there. You know, deep fight there is 10 foot. <laughs> yeah. <So. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's two depths. Two depths at Dardanelle. It's uh, shallow and over just over your head. It's not really deep, deep. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. Yeah. Dirt and 10 feet. <laughs> yeah. So, you, you know, I'm pretty sure that's just going with your gut on what you're seeing, what your experience tells you. And, uh, can't, you know, stay focused on what you're doing. Don't be listening to those other guys. Right. Yep. Yeah. I, I try not to, for sure. Well, y'all it's have hard a... to fish somebody else's patterns. Y'all have a tournament next year on a on a real famous offshore lake, but you might be there a little too early for that to happen. And and honestly, I hope we are. Yeah. And that sounds that sounds funny, but uh, you know I'm not I'm not going to get into the whole thing, but um, this whole new rule of no info, no no whatever they're calling it there. You know, that's the reason I took off last year, too, is because I knew I was going to get my tail kicked if I didn't put my time in. And going to Kentucky Lake, you know, they say that that new rule is going to even the playing field and this and that. And, um, dude, it just ain't, man. Them guys, there's so many of them guys that have so much experience on Kentucky Lake, and I've never been. You know, so I'm going from zero um, and, and being an offshore deal. I'm sure there's a lot of nooks and crannies offshore that I would have to put a ton more time and money into to try to learn what they already know. You know, after years and years and years and years of being on, on this tour or that tour um, and then going to their wheelhouse, you know. So, honestly, let it stay shallow. Um, it'll be easier for me. Even though I'm not a shallow guy, I think it'll be a little bit easier for me and I know how it fishes, you know, lead fishing when they get out there. But I just, I mean, it would take a ton of time. And those fish won't be there when I go to pre-fish it um, before cutoff. You know, they won't be there. That's the hardest thing that I ran into is the patterns, you know, from spawn to, to summer kind of deal. Um, so when I went, if I went there and tried to learn the offshore bite, there's just hardly any fish out there. So how do I know what's good and what isn't? You know, and I'm not allowed yeah. to talk to anybody. So leave it shallow. I hope it stays shallow for there. Yeah, that's a that's an ex that's an excellent point and a good way of looking at it. Yeah, that's you know that's that's my train of thought. But because sometimes you know, sometimes the I'm, hardest thing sometimes the hardest thing to beat is the good old boy network. Yeah, absolutely, and and they've been able to do that for years and years and years and years. Plus their experience on it. You know, so this whole, I don't like that. I mean, honestly, I don't like that new thing. You know, it does not even the playing field. But I'm playing catch up so much as it is um, yeah. to catch up to their experience and their knowledge and their health that they've had umpteen amount of years, you know. Um, so, yeah, we're, I'm going to be behind, I feel like, but I'm going to do my best to, to not let it get to me and, and just, I mean, it's going to take more time and more money now on my part. Yeah, so. at least at least it's a step in the right direction, though. Instead of you know, less and less instead of just sweeping under the, under the math, there at least they're trying. Maybe, maybe next year will be another amendment to that rule or something. I, th- I think they're trying to get there, but I don't. I think it, I think it'll take a couple steps to to tweak it. 
to do to do what now to get where to to get where where it can actually be no information no uh, no getting you know chip cards and putting them in your graphs and you know getting stuff from from lure companies that are known for having you know a team out there well ahead of time getting mm-hmm. them stuff you know yep yep it, it's there now I mean you know if you break that rule as of right now and you get polygraphed well you know you're gonna fail that polygraph yeah and, and they have to police that from now or when the schedule came out to that tournament which you know could be a year away it's gonna be over a year a year or so away that's a yeah. long time to try to police that yeah it is <laughs> it is they just brought a headache on on themselves there i think and i understand the intention yeah uh, but yeah now now trip and the rest of them are constantly going to have to be deciding when do they randomly select people or yes and, and it affects you know it affects so many guys because it's just crazy that you know just for example you know they they uh um they brought something up at the last uh meeting that we had you know on that ruling whereas Okay, we're going to let's just say uh, um, I don't know. We're going to Kentucky Lake. Well, that guy that lives by Kentucky Lake can't go out and do any tournaments, any partner deals. Can't fish Tuesday nighters. And the biggest thing, what I was thinking about, what if the guy guides on that lake and lives? Um, that's his livelihood. He's not able to do that anymore. He can't take another guy out and have any exchange of information at all. And that shuts right. you down for the whole entire year, the whole season, which is yeah. fun. I mean, you know, I've got a sponsor tournament up here at Thousand Island that I'm supposed to be at, a big, you know, big deal that I'm going to be there, this and that. I, I have to fish it by myself. I, I can't do the partner thing. It's It's yeah. just inside the river where the cutoff is. And, and I'm not going to be able to, to have the partner that was supposed to, to be with me that they were going to, um, you know, raffle off and, and be able to fish with me and this and that. So it's just a lot of hoopla that goes along with it. And that's, that's some of the big reasons I don't agree with it, but it is what it is, man. You can't, you know, can't one voice can't do it, change it. So, yeah. Well, Dave, you know, that's what I was telling you Back there in ICAST, uh, you know, uh, Jamie, uh, I work for Strike King, and uh, one of the things that we found out is that we can't have our annual riders event, riders uh, conference. Riders, con- that's the word. Thanks, Dave. A- yeah. But we can't ha- can't have a riders conference there on Kentucky Lake, which has been a tradition for several years, uh, right. because there could be a rider. Well, now that they can't even risk getting in the water with a rider who might be a local rider who knows something about that lake exactly and uh exactly that's right. going to affect it's going to affect a lot of other outdoor lure companies or boat companies that have their have similar conferences on different lakes and different regions what if the schedule comes out and somebody's on their lake they're going to have to make other plans so absolutely. that definitely does affect the industry yep absolutely 100 percent. i mean that all goes along with it none of that stuff is brought up you know i wrote a pretty good email and it did not uh, put down the fact of the no information thing. You know, if we're going to go across the board with that, okay, fine. But it just affects so many other things that go along with the industry. You know, my, my big thing was I, I slid through this whole season until I got to New York with never paying for a hotel. I was invited to this house, this house, stay with me, um, just let me go fishing with you for a few days. You know, I don't know much or I know a little bit or something like that. And we always take the information with a grain of salt. It's not, I don't live off of it, you know, and, and I can't, I'm going to, I'm not going to get invited to a lot of places because they can't even go with me. We can't even talk fishing about the place, you know, it just shuts mm-hmm. down so many other doors. I, I'm hoping it's not, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to. Well, that's an interesting twist. I didn't even think that far ahead, and that's a that's kind of a game changer. Yeah, absolutely. You know how much money that saved me throughout the season? Oh, no doubt. A ton. Yeah. And, absolutely, and I've made so many friends and so many fans by being there 
knowing this person or that person, and then I get introduced to this guy, that guy, hey, let's go hang out, you know, and, and it just, I made so many fans and so many friends, and I can't do that anymore. I mean, that yeah, was, that's, that's a killer to yeah. me. I, I'm trying yeah, they, to start they, they my livelihood. They may not understand it either. I know that everybody they likes don't. to be friendly, and I'm sure everybody's run into that one guy on the on the bank fishing and uh, may not know what the rules are and say, oh, yeah, I called him over there, you know, around that tree over there using such oh. and such lure. Red shed worm right over there, there on that the point. <laughs> you got to wave your hands <laughs> in the air and say blah, 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 blah. Yep, you do. You, Talk to the... do. you can't help. You can't yeah. stop blurting. It's soliciting information is, is the rule. So you can't stop blurting and, and pack yeah. and stop gas stations. You know, we get it all the time. It's just, sir, I can't, I can't talk about it. I can't receive any information. And it's usually done with. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's blurting. But if you're asking, that's soliciting info. And, and that's a big no-no. Yeah. Yeah, that's but. that's such that's such a tricky tricky thing. I, I wish you got. I wish they did put you guys through it, but still maintain yeah. the integrity of the sport and know that everybody's on a, as level a playing field as they can. And uh, as far as information now, Lake Oahe, Oahe is that how you say it? Sounds like it uh, should be in Hawaii, but it's in south <laughs> middle of South Dakota. That one ought to be the the uh, the equalizer tournament next year. Yeah, I don't think anybody's got anything on that way to sit, you know, maybe falling it being out that way. But other than that, I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. But, that yeah. That'll, that'll be a little different. <laughs> it will. Nobody, I've never nobody heard fishes of it. up there. They, they just pheasant hunt. <laughs> so and that's that what I said. Fun. I said, I'm going to go up there and spend a week pheasant hunting and, and then maybe yeah. I'll do a little fishing. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Work on Never it. thought we'd be going to South Dakota, but I don't know how that got thrown in the loop. So had a few more miles on a tour. That's just what we need, you know. I t- I, yeah, absolutely. I can tell you how that got thrown in the loop. Three words: Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. a business. It's a business, <laughs> man. Come on. <laughs> it is. Well, You're yeah, right. I mean, I'm sure they would love to have that kind of tourism that time of year because, yeah, like I said, it's, it's pheasant country up there. So, yeah, summertime absolutely. or springtime, people, some big pros come into town. That'll be a big, big appeal for the city of Pier. Mm-hmm. They're n- they ain't never in their life seen so many stickered boats ever. And when y'all tell y'all, tell <laughs> no. y'all show up, no. they're going to think there's some kind of parade coming in town or something. Yeah, they ain't exactly. Know what that is? Some, they're some used kind to of camouflage trucks and yeah, camouflage trucks and guys walking around with guns. Yeah, ain't that crazy? <laughs> so, so like, can you go fish there right now if you wanted to on that new in that lake yes, conception? I can. Okay, okay. Yes, yes. I, I can fish right up to the cutoff. I All right, so that part, that, part, that part hasn't changed, and you can't be getting a chip from somebody saying they're over there, you know, 300 no. yards out. Nope. Okay. Nope, I can't. But uh, I can't. I got to do everything by myself now. Yeah. I can't take a, a, a family member, a girlfriend, or, or any, a wife and go out and fish during, um, you know, this, this pre-practice stuff before our actual cutoff. Like you just can't have anybody in the boat with you, uh, and because you know one, you know somebody just picks up a, a rod with some crazy ass lure. I'm sorry, I didn't swear, but some oh, crazy fine. lure on there, and and chucks it out there and starts whacking them. Well, you just received information, you know. But Unless you weren't the looking, guy right? doesn't have a clue, huh? Unless you wasn't looking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then all of a sudden you're throwing it like wow this thing works good well you just received information and then you know you can get disqualified and that's the big thing like you get disqualified if you don't pass that uh, Mm -hmm. the polygraph test you know so (laughs) you can ruin somebody's life really quick oh no doubt well just by uh, one disqualification if you ever get lonely out there jamie i'll Take a take a, a lesson out of uh, Gary Yamamoto's book and just uh, get you a little Pekingese dog that you can confide get in. A dog. Get a dog fishing yeah. with you. <laughs> They've seen that firsthand. It. I'll end up using <laughs> it for top water action or something. Oh, you could definitely up north. Yeah, get, get you some pike and musky. Oh uh, yeah. Really appreciate you 
being on, man. I, we'll let you go. I know you've had a busy time, and like you said, bu- time is money. Budget your time. Good luck yes, in the, the St. Clair tournament coming up here in a couple of weeks. All right. Well, I sure do appreciate it. It was nice talking to you guys. Thank you very hey, much. Hey, do me a yeah, favor. Likewise. Don't don't pinch yourself yep. and don't wake up. Just keep and just enjoy the ride. I'm gonna try right to the end. Absolutely. There you go, man. It is what it is. I'm gonna roll with it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, James. All right, man. Take care. Uh, all right, we'll guys. Take soon. care. Have a good night. Yes. Appreciate Bye. you. Bye. Pretty cool interview, Matt. Good dude. At least he's my kind man, of my it. kind of people right there. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. I, he seems like he's handling this uh, life in the on the big tour pretty well, considering yeah. you know jumping right in. I mean, he did the right thing. He, like you said, he he was prepared. He, he planned it out. He took he his time. Like he, he took, his, took time. his time. You have to get really good locally before you can get decent nationally. I mean, that's just a proven fact. Yeah. You know, you take every one of those dudes on the elite, they can go back home and kick most people's butt. You know. Yeah. So, that's a cool deal. Well, how are you been, Dave? We've been off for kind of on and off this summer, and I know I uh, thought I was going to have to cancel on you again tonight at last minute, but I, I didn't. I had uh, uh, had some neighbors, friendly neighbors, stopped by and checked on me and brought some fresh veggies from their garden over and stuff, and had to chit chat. And I looked over, right. I looked over on the stove and it said seven fifty two, and I was like, uh oh, <laughs> <Uh-oh. laughs> uh, it's like, man, that's awful nice of y'all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we um I guess I guess I should give our TOS listeners an update, the ones that don't know. We uh we made it through, Matt. We uh I got a text Friday. Well, I guess was off was off last week on purpose cuz 2 weeks ago this coming Friday I had colon surgery to yeah. uh remove some leftover cancer stuff from my colonoscopy the doctor couldn't get all of it but he got most of it so that happened they took eight inches of colon uh 12 lint nodes and a thing that not everybody has in their colon but some people do and it's called a mechal diverticulum it's this little flat thing and uh, she took it for precautionary because it gets infected easy and there's and you, and you can live without it pretty easy so She took it, and she took the lymph nodes to get them tested because you have three layers to your colon. And on the the first inside layer, anything can touch it, and you're fine. If anything touches the second layer, it's automatic surgery. So my tumor I had touched the second layer. Not bad, but enough to warrant surgery. And uh, so she goes in there and takes that, and then she tests the lymph nodes and tests... uh, everything else around it and everything came back 100 percent negative so we're on the road to surgery recovery now i'm just dealing with some abdominal pains and soreness and uh you know all that good stuff so i took i was off work all last week and you know me matt i'm not one to like sit around and just look at the wall and stare but yeah, well, yeah. over the weekend the whole boredom set in like saturday <laughs> I did pretty good. I got home from the hospital Monday, and then, uh, you know, Monday was kind of, I was kind of asleep all day, most of the day, basically. I was, had so much medication in me. Tuesday was kind of the same way, and time Saturday come, I was pretty bored. And I told my wife, I said, I think I'm going to try to work like a half a day each day next week. So I started half a day yesterday, half a day today. So I'm either doing the half morning half in the middle or half on the other side of the day one of the halves i pick is what the half i'm gonna work so uh it's been it's done me good to get out and you know kind of get back in the groove a little bit i still gotta take my time i'm still pretty sore and i can't really do anything um i can't lift over 10 pounds and i can't really you know do anything exercise wise i can't really get my heart rate up or thin my blood or anything like that but I can do, you know, I, I know what my limit is. I can do what I can, type deal. And uh, man, I appreciate all the, all the prayer and the texts and the and the get well soon's and the we got your back, buddy. And ah, oh, man, it humbles you pretty quick to when you get all these texts and emails and phone calls from people you hadn't talked to in a while, and somebody tells somebody and they call you and say, "Hey, man, 
what's going on? And then you, you know, I feel like a broken record sometimes, you know, you tell them the story and you tell them how close you was to being in bad shape. And, uh, you know, it was just divine intervention that it got caught as early as it did. And, um, it just, man, just puts a, basically puts a lump in my throat every day to, to re, you know, to keep replaying it. And, you know, but, but the thing about it is, is, is I'm on like this mission to get people screened before 50 for your colonoscopy. I mean, I mean, I had something living in me and I had no idea if I wouldn't have got screened, it would have been a bad deal. And, you know, doctor told me, he said, if you waited a year, it would have been bad. If you waited two years, I probably couldn't have helped you. And by the way, you'd have never made it to 50. So, uh, you know, just if you got, if you got, if you got immediate family member that's had any colon cancer, colon problems at all, you know, immediate as in brother, sister, mother, dad, you need to basically, they basically tell you now, stop what you're doing and schedule your colonoscopy. They had a new, uh, news thing come out the end of February that basically said that. So we go back in a couple, couple weeks and get checked up by the doctor, but until then we're trying to eat bland food and not, <laughs> not, not disrupt anything no more than I want it to be disrupted. <laughs> Well, that's one interesting way to lose weight there, Dave. Oh, you know, Matt, that's that's the most disheartening part is I'm not losing like I thought I would. She told me I'd lose oh, no. she told me I'd lose seven to ten like within the first couple of weeks and I'm still waiting on it. Oh no. <laughs> I mean it's some of, and some of it still I've still got some swelling from surgery, so luckily they didn't cut me open, they did it lapar- laparoscopically. So oh, I just had a couple like a couple pokes in me on my right side and then I had a little cut on my left side where they brought all the stuff out of me and uh, but man i had really good nurses i tried to cut up with them and had a good time and um uh, i'd recommend that it's a uk owned hospital right beside them it's a smaller type deal and that's like heck yeah that's kind of like kind of like a small town hospital type deal so that's right up that's right up my alley did the did they have a cafeteria like a Kroger sponsored cafeteria in there since it's UK? Well, I was not too far from Kroger Field, which I'd still call. There's a T-shirt that this company makes in town that says, "I'm still calling it Commonwealth Stadium." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was over there in that vicinity. If I'd, have, if probably if my room was on the other side of the hallway, I probably would have saw that side of the campus. But I was on the other side of the campus that pointed toward part of town instead of part of the campus so uh yeah it was a i opened an experience i've never really been through anything major like that before but um i appreciate all the like i said i appreciate all the all the uh, prayers and thoughts and, and texts and phone calls and emails and whatnot and it was uh it was a journey it was a month long month long journey but we got a text from our Doctor Friday, I'd lay down Friday afternoon. I wasn't feeling that good. I laid down and I heard my phone ding there beside the bed, and I thought oh, I'll get it in a second. And then it dinged again. And I thought, dang, I'm going to sleep. I don't care. I'll get in a little bit. And then my wife walked in the room, and said, "You better check your phone." And I said, "Why?" She said, "You got a pretty good text from your doctor." And I looked on it, and it said, uh, "Everything's clear." And then it had in the last line it said, "You are cancer free." exclamation 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 and that just you know then i then i couldn't sleep you know then i had to oh, yeah. call my dad and you know tell some buddies and ah uh, it was a pretty friday was another emotional roller coaster day <laughs> so yeah, but yeah. Glad, That's glad, awesome, glad the ride's over i appreciate me everybody too, me too me too yeah i hope to now, now maybe we can go fishing next year matt and go catch some go go hog snatching like aaron martins did how about that now we hadn't had a chance to talk about it, but uh, of course, <laughs> same old thing. When a Matt has has somebody on your fantasy team on his fantasy team, and he drops him, that guy ends up doing pretty well. And sure enough, Aaron Martin's Did got it. back in the winter circle. Oh man, I just remembered. We got to make a phone call. Yeah, Actually, I told it. I just sent him a text and said I'd be calling here in two minutes. Okay, all right. About a minute. All right. I got to rambling again, and time time gets away. There's one, if, if there's one thing I did, if one thing I did get from my dad, it is the gift of gab. I can talk. Like we always said, my dad would talk to Walt and talk back to him. <laughs> He's just that dude. <laughs> well, that comes in handy when you have a podcast. Uh, you know what? That might be one of the reasons. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, Dave, uh, tell you what. 
it is we got a lot going on, man. We got the we got a college big college tournament going up in Bemidji in Minnesota. Big and got the cup going on. Just had a an, an open with uh, Rick Morris coming back and winning with a huge sack. Fat sack. The last day. 23 pounds, over 23 pounds. Fat sack. What they call that? That's the new lingo, man. Yep. That's the new hammer. The new That's for placing hammers, fat sack. I think, didn't he have 23 pounds? Didn't Aaron Martins have 23 pounds? Aaron had 20, both have 23. Martin pounds? had 23 and some change. Well, that was an open in the league, so. But yeah, I didn't, yeah. I didn't, I meant to. Maybe keep this. up with that more and i didn't i got busy and i didn't really after friday's news i didn't really uh, to tell you the truth man i didn't really give a crap <laughs> 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 i kind of zoned out and didn't pay no attention yeah i imagine you were kind of doing <laughs> i was i was in saturday i got out and like halfway cleaned up my garage i get i get stuff uh out of my garage out of whack and gets on my nerves and every time you pull into it you're like man i need to clean this up i need to clean this up so saturday i did it might have took me all day because i'm slow as a turtle right now but i got it done i did take me a two-hour break and friday night that's amazing well actually friday like afternoon like people that sit around watch tv all the time don't see how they do it but i did catch i did record a show on the outdoor channel called bait shop Man, if you want to see a cheesy rendition of professional fishing, watch Bait Shop. It's okay. it is pretty cheesy, but it's kind of cool at the same time. Like Zona and Keith Allen were in it, and it literally talks about the Elite Series. It's from 2008, so I'm assuming Bass used that as kind of a marketing movie. You know, I probably called them and asked them. They said, "Heck yeah!" So it was, you know, 2008 eight, Elite Series wasn't that old, a couple years old, so. But it's pretty cool if you get a chance to rent it or Netflix it or whatever it is. Bait Shop. It's got Billy Ray Cyrus and Bill Ingvall. <laughs> that oh, right there ought to tell you how good it is. <laughs> uh, we'll have but to I, figure that one out I did, I did in between garage cleaning up. I sat down and watched it Saturday afternoon, ate me a sandwich, and drank me a, drank me a water. and, and uh, it, was, it was pretty cheesy. <laughs> it was pretty good, though, too, at the same time. Wow. Yeah. Uh now, where can you find that? I caught it. It was on the Outdoor Channel. I just happened to catch it, and I hit record. So I don't know where it's at or where. I don't know if it's on Netflix. I don't know if it's Redbox. But just look up Bait Shop, like, you know, like you're going to the bait shop. And that's the name of it. And look it up and watch it. It ain't. It's kind of funny. All right. I'm going to have to look that up. Now Mark, we'll have to talk about this later. I think Mark Davis used to. Whatever happened to his show? The pilot. Yeah, whatever happened to his show? We'll have to ask him next time. Yeah, we'll have to find out. All right, let's get the Jasons on. All right, do it, man. If Skype will let us. Hello, oh. hello. Hello. All right, hey, guys, what's going on? You got Matt and Dave here. Nice. How are y'all doing tonight? Sorry about that, Jason. And Jason, Matt wouldn't shut his flapper up, and I kept telling him he was going to be in trouble. <laughs> it, it's Somebody just typical. So, uh, all right. Now, we've, we've Jason Baggett and Jason Duran, right? Ten yes, All right. So, let me – got first question out of the box. Do you have to be named Jason to be associated with bonus loop or contingents? You do. I get okay. Correct. Say that again, Jason. Back I, guess, I guess it is prerequisite or something. It's just it's kind of funny how it's all worked out. Okay. okay. Yeah, because we had Jason Johnson on here. It'd be kind of confusing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We confuse ourselves that way sometimes. Who are we talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so you guys, I guess you both got both of you guys are down in uh, South Carolina for the Cup this week. I'll be headed there on Thursday. So he's already there. Jason is. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Jason. Jason is Matt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, well, I know Jason Baggett, Mister Baggett. We talked to you a, a few months ago, kind of on the cusp of bonus loop and what was happening with that. And here we are near the end of the season. Sounds like you guys got something going on at the Cup. Um, well, whoever, whichever one of you wants to take it, kind of take off. I know I'm uh, Duran. I missed you at uh, at ICAST. Uh, I kept popping in now the Strike King booth. I wasn't able to catch up with you, so 
I, but I did talk to Jason Johnson a little bit about about what's going on. So kind of give us an update on how everything's been going this year with the new programs. I'll start and I'll let uh, Jason Duran kind of finish it up and, and give his uh, two cents on it. Um, so far, so good. Uh, contingence is, is growing. We've had a lot of interest here within the last month and a half, two months. Um, the site stats just keep going through the roof. You know, people learning about contingency programs and registering through that site. So we've got a lot going on there. Um, we initially, you know, when we first went on uh, the podcast with y'all, we told y'all we were working on a sister site to this. And we're we're there you know we talked about it a little bit at, at the classic in houston um we were really confident in the product that we had and now we're ready to deliver it uh, in a in a beta test type mode where we're going to be testing it this fall in a full-blown scenario and what bonus loop is anglers and competitors it, it it doesn't really have to be anglers, but that's where we're starting. The number one problem that they have or we have as anglers with bonus programs, we don't know where we end up. A lot of the times anglers will contact the tournament director or the product, uh, the company themselves and, Hey, you know, did I win? Uh, you know, I placed 13th. Did I, did I win the money? They just really have no understanding of that. And it's a really, it's kind of a gamble on some, you know, elements of that. So bonus loop takes all that guesswork out of, out of the equation. They'll be able to go to the website, put in all their pertinent information, and such as the, the series that they're fishing, the, the competitive uh, tournament. Their boat, tow vehicle, the motors, trolling motors, electronics, the, you know, anchoring systems, optics. Uh, and some of this will change during each venue, but each angler has to submit their own information. And then once it's said and done, the, the, the event's done, our application does what it does, and it will contact those anglers saying, Hey, Matt Ellis, you've won the Strike King, uh, you know, uh, bonus money. Uh, you know, David Rose, you won the Bass Cat Quest money. And it takes out that guesswork, and, and it really solves a problem on the tournament director side because they get hammered about it. Um, so with that being said, we've, we're solving a problem that is, is highly known, and it's, it causes a lot of confusion. Cause a lot of headaches as well. So yeah, I spent a lot of time. Go ahead, Jay. No, no, go ahead. Finish it up. Well, I, I spent a lot of time at ICAST talking to vendors, and I even spent some time talking to tournament directors. And uh, the constant question we ask for them is, does this solve your problem? Does this fix a lot of the problems and the phone calls and the endless emails you get on Sunday afternoon after the Saturday tournament? And, and they're all like, I can't believe that y'all are going to do this. You know, it, it's going to solve a lot of our headache. You know, and they're, and they're like, well, what do we have to do to get on board? So we're really excited that tournament organizations, tournament directors are even willing to come join us and partner with us and help us to, to answer those questions that they get. But then it really comes down to the grassroots with the angler, ultimately just winning more money. The, the sponsor organizations want to give that money away, and sometimes – a lot of times talking to those those vendors at the at the ICAST, they're like, you know, nobody ever even claims this money sometime. And we're like, really? So to tell the guys listening out there today, if you're an, a tournament angler, you, for one, need to go register for the programs. If you don't register for the programs, you can't win. So we can tell you how to get plugged in, answer all those questions on that. But then when bonus loops full swing, make sure you're plugged in the bonus loop because there's a really good chance you can win the money. I mean, it's it's that easy. Can one simply sign up through Contingents and Bonus Loop and be tied in to them, or do they still need to go through them and then through y'all? At this point, it's still um, – we are the, the 
the beginning point to find out what those programs are. So you, we have on our site, you can, it goes directly to uh, say BASCAT or, or goes directly to those organizations that are providing the bonus money. So the forms are there. It, it, it's easier to find where all they all are. You don't have to search around on a, a competitor's website to try to find out where the bro- bonus program is. We, we send you right there too. And one, one and unique a, feature once once we release the, the second version before the first of the year, as they're signing up, and, and let's say Dave, uh, you know, he clicks basket, you know, he clicks basket as his boat. It's going to auto generate a question: Are you, you know, are you signed up for the Quest program? It's going to be very intuitive. So as you're going through it, you know, on the front end, it's going to take just a little bit of time. Uh, we, we've, we've streamlined the process as best that we can right now. Um, and then once it's done, it's done. You just got to go back. If you go from a, a bass cat to a skeeter, then you just have to go back over there, change, change the information. Now, one thing we are going to start doing, we are starting to begin, you know, we're beginning to work with some of these companies because, like like Duran said, you know, we're solving a problem that's, you know, going to keep them from having headaches. But one of the really ironic aspects to this, this solution was I was at a tournament, and they did not know who, who was going to receive the Bass Cat Quest money. There were there were two anglers. They were both screaming that you know, hey, the bass cat money's mine. This guy says no, you're not qualified because of this. Bonus loop's going to take all of that out, and so it works for the anglers as well as the tournament directors as well as the, the, the you know the organization that holds their own bonus program, so to speak. Yeah, and, and like in talking to these tournament directors. Um, I, I'll say it again, you know, a lot of guys don't register for the program, so it goes down pretty deep maybe to get the Garmin money. It goes way down in the list, you know, to find a guy that has registered for Garmin and is running a Garmin. Now, there may be five guys ahead of him running a Garmin, but they didn't register, and they lost the Garmin money. And it's like, why? Guys don't know about it. Yeah, I, I... – this is a still pretty good, a pretty new concept to a lot of us who fish, you know, let's just say on the BFL or mm-hmm. some of the Ram B, ABA level, you see a lot of them when you hear about, oh, yeah, I won Triton Gold or contingency stuff, or I won um, Evan Root or, or Lawrence Hummingbird, my, whatever it is. But you see those, it's the same old guy, little guys doing it in these little regions. Right. But people don't realize there's a, whole lot more companies out there that have uh you know bonus programs like this well yeah and, and I, I fish the a, abt and a lot of guys i talk to don't even understand it you know they don't understand what they need to do so you know we're communicating directly with guys i'm fishing against and saying hey man you know if you're fishing at the top finishing at the top man you need to be registered you got to do it so so instead of keeping us in suspense where do we go register at Friday, you'll, we're going to post a link on our Facebook page. Jason Duran will be down here Thursday. Uh, Jason Johnson will be in the booth with us, FLW Tour, uh, Tour Pro. So we're going to have a link that, after you know, starting Friday, will be on our Facebook page. It'll be pinned on our Twitter account. It'll be on Instagram. It'll be everywhere. But they'll be able to click that link and go register. So we're not going to a dot com. We got to go. I mean, I'm, I'm a little confused now. Well, the premise of this application is still in the, what we call beta testing. Okay. Okay. Uh, so it, we're not going to release it to a dot com, so to speak. It, it's on a on a private website that's totally secure, and we have to kind of guard that until we release the final product. Uh, probably the first of October. Okay. The only thing I know about beta is VCR replaced it. 
<laughs> but I mean, spin that help you with that a little more. Is more of what you're trying to do is you're trying to sign up for a database. You're trying to let us know what programs that you signed up for, so that when that email comes out after the tournament, we know who to send it to. So okay. we're asking you for information. What's what are you running on your boat? You know, what rods are you using? What reels are you using? Those yeah. kind of things. So we're asking those questions. We're building a database at that point. And then when tournament season rolls back around, we'll be ready to tell you because we'll work with the tournament directors and say, all right, who's winning? Who's won? And then turn it right around to you on Monday and say, hey, here's what you won. Go claim it. So all the social media starting Friday of this week during the Cup, you saying? Yes, sir. That's correct. All right. And we'll be posting uh, wh- you know, posts from contingents, uh, social media, and bonus slip social media. And what's your what's your booth number there at the cup? It's number eighteen. Okay, just like Peyton Manning. Okay, good deal. <laughs> I was, good number. I was going to say Bobby Labonte. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I think I was just saying that we're kind of. We're kind of going legal. We're coming eighteen. It's kind of what I was thinking, you know. So, yeah, yeah. I think I think uh, okay. I think Bobby Labonte had the interstate battery number eighteen. I think I'm right. You know, you and, and just to add something again to this, when when we first kind of started talking about this, you know, two to three weeks ago, we weren't trying to you know create some big hype about it. Um, you, and you can even ask Duran about this. People started asking questions like, you know, what, what are y'all doing with this? You know, and when we started talking to them about it, they initially seen the the, the problem. They they seen the need for this. And we're just trying to simplify things, make it easier for the anglers, the companies, the tournament directors, the event, or you know, everybody collectively. So, and you know, continue to solve problems. I mean, we're all going to start signing up for some next year. If I'm going to keep doing some of the local, you know, ABA mm-hmm. B, and mm-hmm. uh, well, BFL, some of them other ones. I know BFL might be a good one to go for. Yep, yep. The money's available for that. And that's the thing. The money's already been put up. The companies are paying the money. The money's out there. And uh, the companies, I guess, are, you know, maybe a little, some, a little bit frustrated that nobody's claiming it. You know, you talk to those post staff managers or those kind of guys and they're like well, nobody ever calls us for that money and i'm just like man i i'm fixing to start calling <laughs> you know yeah it, it, I, hey, I think that that'll, be, that'll be different next year right that brings what's up a one really of the good go ahead is we we have a lot of companies that call us and, and want us to to develop and market a contingency program they and the first thing is why do i need one and when we start talking to them, they're like, well, that's what social media is for. No, not necessarily. The bonus programs incentivize your consumers based on their participation with your product. And that's where a lot of companies really kind of miss the boat on it. They're, you know, they're saying, oh, I want to go spend X amount in our advertising campaign, campaign where they could be utilizing the same money, if not less, to reach a broader audience. Yeah, I think it is a cool. Deal. What is one of the most high dollar, uh, unleft, untouched money out there that you know of? Do you, can you think of any off the top of your head? Like what company uh, has has the most money ready, but nobody claims it? I, I, I'll say one of the probably the most used products that uh, everybody's probably running is one of the Atlas jack plates. Atlas Rewards goes unclaimed very often. So if you have an atlas and you – does there have to be like a, a certain size to the tournament? No. Nope. they have to be one of their well, tournaments they endorse? Or? Yeah. Yeah, there are certain qualifications for that kind of stuff. But okay. But they're, they're, in, they're in most of them. Because I know the boys on Kentucky Lake, they run Tritons just because of that Triton money that they claim yep. a lot. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah, and they claim it. They claim it. Oh yeah, they know exactly what. I think they have like yep. a sixty boat limit. If it's under sixty, they're pretty pissed because they're probably going to yep. win, and it's going to be like fifty-seven <laughs> boats. And they're like, "Dad, gum it! <laughs> I could have paid three entry fees and got it." <laughs> yeah, could have been. Yeah, could have been a difference of what five grand or whatever it is. Five yeah, totally. Yeah, it's pretty big deal. Seven. Yeah, 
Phoenix same way with Phoenix boats. Yeah. You know, they, they've been pretty aggressive in the past on their contingency. Is, is either one of the new boat manufacturers, I mean new, I mean Falcon and Ballistic, is either one of them boats jumping into the arena yet? I haven't seen anything from any of them yet. I mean, okay. Jackson, have you? Uh, I have talked to both of them, yes. And while we're at the uh, we I am going to go to the Falcon Nest, as they call it, uh, it's just literally right up the road. Uh, Thursday evening, they're having an open house, and we're gonna. I'm gonna meet with them about that. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I know that uh, they're playing on the bird thing, kind of like Phoenix does. I wonder if they're gonna get any kickback from the original bird people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. But, you Maybe. know, they've um, you know both both you know both, they, you know again that they're offering something different. Oh, yeah. um, and I don't know whether to do this or not, but Ballistic, you know, they, their, I think their production facility completely collapsed uh, around the first of the year due, due to a, a huge snowfall. I did. I and, went, so that's why they went quiet for a little while. Yes, yes. Okay. And, uh, yeah, uh, they, you know, we, we were talking to them and, and found that out. It was just a you know a horrible tragedy. But uh, I got to look at a falcon at the Beaver Lake uh, FLW tour event. Yeah. Uh, you know, again, it's got a great layout. You know, they're taking on some some new uh, design things that uh, you know other boat manufacturers aren't doing. So again, you know, they're just trying to appeal to you know other uh, you know other anglers or, or a different angler crowd. So that uh, yeah. thing. The thing that caught my eye the most about ballistic is the no gauges in the console. Everything is ran through the graph. Every, your, all yes. your pressure, all your pressures, your fuel, your mile per hour, everything's in the graph, and that's it. That's pretty slick. Yep. Very streamlined. Yeah. Yeah, but they have they have a bullet cockpit look to them, in my opinion. That's kind of interesting. They do, and and one of the points that I I, I told both of them is when someone is looking to buy a product, they, they're they looking if they have a contingency program. And it's getting more and more of a decision factor on which one to buy. Yeah. Someone may be very brand loyal, but they may go with a competitor to that brand just because there's a better payout in the contingency program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can expect, we're, we're actually building right now a matrix for that, for anglers, that will be a free resource that anglers will be able to go out there and compare all the, com the the contingency programs that are currently available, where they're applicable to the payout, every, all the, the the unified information for the bonus programs. Well, it sounds like a winner. It sounds like more people need to claim their free money then. Yeah, and then when you yeah, when you start do. looking at product products to add to your boat, um, you need to look at what contingency programs are being offered, and yeah. maybe shift and say, hey, you know what, I need I need to get that Garmin money. Exactly, exactly. All right, so everybody watch Bonus Loop and Contingent social media starting Friday to learn how to yes, get in the get into the loop. No pun intended. <laughs> That's it. All right. Well, all right, fellas. We appreciate it. We'll get the word out and uh, get things right and get things done on our end. And we'll be looking for your stuff coming later this week. And if anybody guys, has any questions right. about programs, we're the guys to call. All right. Do y'all want to give out any contact information, emails, or anything, or do you want to wait for Friday? Uh, we'll wait till Friday. I mean, they can visit uh, contingents dot com right now. Uh, it Just all goes to yeah the the emails or they. Can Contact us through social media. Both of, either either myself, Jason Baggett, or Jason Duran will reply, and uh, you know we'll get them the needed information that they require. All right, fellas, appreciate it. Thank y'all. Appreciate it, guys. Good luck out there. Have fun. Y'all too. Thank Have a great week. Yeah, we'll see you soon. Bye bye. Speaking of the cup, Dave, guess what time it is? Um, it's. I'm glad I've got my my off candles lit up outside, Matt, because my ankles are trying to get chewed up, but my off candles are doing the job. I should have a job with who is it has off? Let's see, Gary Klein has repel. Repel. 
off used to used to be an FLW team, but nothing. I guess I'm I don't have any off and didn't get money to, for my candles burning. Is that Johnson and Johnson? That might be. Off? I know these things appear to work because my ankles feel better. Uh, running through the names of Duck Man. Are there any names that stand out to you just running through it, just scanning? Yeah, a couple names really, especially one really stands out. Would that be Bradford Beavers? No. Okay, his name stood out to me for some reason. I just think Beaver that's Lake. a BB, Bradford Beavers. That sounds like a pear or an apple or something. And then there was another name that, that grabbed my <laughs> another name that grabbed my eye real quick. Oh, Hi Chul Kim. And some people would say, "Excuse you." Is that a co-angler? No, there's no co-anglers in the cup anymore, Matt. That's over. This has to be. I'm assuming uh, this is a foreign angler because of his name, H Y O, little name D H U L, last name. He's never fished a tour event. He's never made any FLW money whatsoever. But he's in the cup, so I'm assuming he qualified through something internationally. It would be hard to ever make an yeah. FLW dollar and make the cup. Must must have been the Korean FLW Korea. But you think he would have to win something to get in there, which would make him a dollar or two to make it over here. I'm a little confused on the no money. Yeah, I'm kind of interested in that too. I'm looking at. Are you looking at the, like the? Salary? How are you finding these people? I'm just going down by the angler's names. All I'm doing. Okay. I see Bradford Beavers. He's number four on my list of minor alphabetical. And there he is. Yo, Hyo Chukim. Yeah, let's let's look him up. Wouldn't that be something if he won? Dude, I'm telling you right now, he would have went from zero to three hundred thousand in the blink of an eye. Now he's from Benton, Kentucky. And how's he make zero dollars in being the cup then? Uh, this is something we'll have to It's zeros across the board about. except for his price is $5. If he hasn't made anything, he ought to be free. He's, uh, as far as I can tell, he fished, he fished the Costa Series Championship in 2016 ended up 51st place. Oh, that didn't get him there. As a pro. We'll have to ask our old buddy Joe Opager about this. What is maybe the... He was, uh, maybe he's an ambassador for their, for their uh, tour over in Asia. All right. Is something this... Because this is fishing league. It is. But how do you make zero dollars and make the cup? I'm I'm confused. <laughs> how do you not win something or finish in the top ten, which would pay in not and make the cup? I'm confused. This must be in American dollars. Maybe he won on Korean. Oh, dollars. maybe that's maybe they haven't done the conversion rate yet, Matt. Maybe that's yeah. what it is. Because I I don't think I guess you have to go to FLW Korea. Maybe they have their own website. I don't have a. Well, I don't think my subscription's up to date, so I can't click on the dude's name. But I thought that was very interesting. And that's very interesting. I mean, there's a story. Now look at sure. old Christopher. We'll Christopher Jones is worth six bucks. He's made no top threes, no top tens, no wins. Never fished an FLW tour. But well, this lost my place. Dang! What did I say his name was? Christopher somebody. Christopher Jones. All right, let me go to the chase. Now, he's won money. But he's won 71000 He's got to be a Costa guy then. I think they're they're either Costa or Federation. There are some Federation guys in here, too. Now, that, now his name I can't click on. That's interesting. I'll be darned. How can I click on his but not the other dude? Oh, maybe All it's right. just maybe it's just taking his time. Old Bradford Beavers, there he is. Bradford Beavers has never got so much media time in his life, Matt. <laughs> well, let's go with, you know, let's dust off our uh, FLW Fantasy Fishing team here and, and do fantasy picks to wrap the show up. So, oh, I got on on Mr. Kim's thing. He's fished one event. Says Benton, Kentucky, which, which, which we know that's the headquarters of FLW. He finished 51st. And caught six bass, weighing eleven fifteen, but he's in the cup. What's up? Some, something, 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 something's going on there, brother. Tell you what, I will guarantee you. By the time we have our next show, Dave, I will find out what's been what's going you got on. A, with Mr. You got a hook up with old Opager. Yeah, we do. And Matt, I'm I'm disappointed. My phone did not ring 
during this podcast from a call from Oklahoma, so I'm a little disappointed. Oh, were you expecting to ring? Yeah, I was wanting to win that $1,000 BTL prize pack. Oh, yeah, that was going on I tonight, think the same it? time as we was, they was. Well, that would have been an interesting show. Oh, I would have hung up on you, brother. Trust me. <laughs> Go for it. I'm in, yeah, I guess I forgot they were doing that tonight at 7 wow. p.m. Congratulations yeah, guys, to whoever won. That was a neat deal. Yeah, uh, go back and listen to – go to BTLs. We'll do a little free buzz for their show, like, like Jeffrey's needs. Yeah. It, but uh, Bass Talk Live, BassZone.com, and uh, listen to some of the – what was it, instant? Dialed in. Dialed in uh, voicemails they left. Uh, you give me, you give me the opportunity to leave my opinion. I'll do it. Yeah. It's basically what our man, our what our first guest was talking about, man. I did not want to bring that up, but mm-hmm. and and, yeah. and that call I, that I, call was edited down. There was more to that call, but I it, it, I did enjoy leaving them that voicemail. Yeah, speaking of that, we'll wrap up the show after our fantasy picks. I think we got a Floyd left us a new voicemail while you were wait a minute while we were on hiatus, didn't he? My, hang on, my my team wiped out, Matt. Uh oh! Supposed to auto save. I, I even did the pounds and ounces. Now I got now wow. I got to log back in. I even got like logged out. Do your do Floyd from New Market. All right, let me let me. This was uh. Dang. When did he call? Maybe we maybe we've done this one already. No, I think this is the one we haven't done. Now there's my team. It's back. Shoo. We're going to have to rethink all that again. Hmm. I don't have him on my... Well, all right, do your team, then. Who you got on your team? All right, well, I'm going to go straight down the middle here. I'm straight shooting across the board. Going with Andy Morgan. Why That's not? That's a shocker. He's got to win one of these one of these days. Brian Thrift. $30. Another $30 player. Anthony Gagliardi. Probably the favorite to win. No one, doubt. Since he's won it there before. Won it the year, Dave, won it the year that he got dis- DQ'd. Yeah. Early in the season. Didn't he have like a, didn't right. he have like a illegal co-angler with him or something? I think, yeah, during one of the practices or other events, he practiced yeah. or fished with somebody who had fished there already. Yeah. yeah, one of those kind of deals. But he came back, came back from that and won the cup, made it look pretty he easy did. too. So I got, so Morgan Thrift, Gagliardi, Scott Canterbury, just he's a good all around fisher. David Dudley, Brandon Cobb, who is not too far away up the road and uh, worth the money to get. I think he's a very consistent angler, good offshore kind of fisherman too. I think he knows a little bit about the lake. He's sort of a second semi favorite dude. Then I'm gonna wrap it up with Matt Airy and Scott Martin. Interesting. Three dollars left over, and I think I went fifty-two pounds even. I've got twenty-nine dollars left over. I got me some Wesley Strader. You never know when Wesley's going to show up and want to own a big event. I got me some Gagliardi and Andy Morgan, obvious reasons, and I got me some Brian Thrift, obvious reasons. Then my next three, Matt, I went a little uh, off the beaten path. I'm assuming this is going to be a deep bite. I'm assuming it's warm over there. The fish are going to be deep. I went and got me some Marshall Deacons for nine dollars. Then Ooh, and then I'm thinking, let's see, Lake Murray. It's probably deep, clear lake. What part of the country has several deep, clear lakes? None other than Central Missouri. I went and got me traveling partners and former guest of TOS on the live interview recorded. At the same time, with some Mojo involved, with some Jeremy Lawyer and some James Watson, because yeah. those are Table Rock, uh, Tanny Como, and Lake of the Ozarks guys. They probably know how to catch them that way, the same way that Bill Murray. And then to round it out, I went and got me some Clark Linlet, because why not? Because I never picked a yeah, winner. I, I never picked a winner anyway, so I'm going with what I think could work. Well, between us both, we might have one of the win- we might have the winner on our team. Could have. One of us could have. 
Yeah, Clark would be a good one to have too. Clark had Cumberland. Clark had Cumberland won, and then he lost it on the last day. That gummit. Yeah, he told me. Uh, actually, I forgot to mention during ICAST we had a we had a dinner one night, and Clark went out with us. And uh, I asked him what happened there. He said that he it, he didn't realize that the fish were going to the bed, going to spawn by that last day. Really. Or coming well, the other the other thing that hurt him is that stinking eighteen inch smallmouth roll. I think he caught plenty of yeah. seventeen, seventeen and a halfs. Yeah. So you went. They were either fifty. You went fifty two even. Yeah, I went fifty. I'm at fifty eight seven. Okay, you're going big, big for this. And remember, it's a three day tournament. It's a four day, right? No, they brought it from th- four down to three. Well, this thing says four day cumulative. Uh, right next to your pounds, does it not say winning it, weight four day cumulative? It does, but I'm pretty sure I saw an announcement that they decided to go to a three day event. Yeah, Am I, did I just dream? That? I think you may have. It's got there's got to be something surely on the home page that says what day the date? Yeah, August 11th, 12th, and 13th. 11, 12, 13. Well, they need to change their thing that says four-day commutative weight. They do. They do. That's a little fine detail they need. the programmers need to work on. Uh, Good catch there, Dave. Crap. Where's my team at? Attention to detail. Out of, oh, this thing's blocking it. Hang on. My team. Well, I'm daggum. I'm real high then, ain't I? Well, you know, 58 divided by 3, that's that's pretty stout. That's no pretty matter stout. Where you're All right, let me take my number ahead and do it times 3 instead of times 4. Yeah, yeah, that's 19 pounds a day. I mean, that's possible. No, not this time of year there. But this time of year, yeah. 43.2. Ooh, 43. 43.2. Saving. Uh, I, was, that, I was saying 17 pounds a day, but yeah, that's that's, that's 14 that's, a day. Yeah, there. that's 14.4, I think. Oh, I think oh. it's 14.4. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, three days. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. You know, seeing a, seeing a lot of it is FLW. Seeing a lot I mean, of it is a tough goose one. eggs and donuts, and in uh, one particular person that's not on my team that I think was on your team, sure is complaining a lot about it being in South Carolina in the summertime. He wants a northern championship. Tell me, nah, tell me, what big. northern lake, Matt, has an arena close enough to it to handle it? The only, the only town I can <laughs> think of would be Syracuse with the Syracuse Carrier Dome, but what other town up north with a lake has an arena that can handle it? Yeah, good point. I can't I can't anymore. either, unless there's a hockey arena somewhere that I don't, you know, probably don't know about. Yeah. Unless they wanted to have it there, like uh, the on the Delaware River, which that would be a... That would be a mistake. Yeah, that's your, that's your, that's your boy Dudley. He's been complaining for like three days in a row now. Ah. Yeah. Ever since practice started, he's been complaining. Wants it up north. Yeah. Huh? There are some folks say they want the cup to be out on the west coast now. Uh, that's just the west coast people saying, "Bring me your tour." Yeah. Yeah, we, you know, Cody Meyer and all them keep coming out here. I'm sure they would love to have somebody come up their way. Oh well, that yeah, that'd be fair, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, Michael Bennett's probably the only guy I know of. Well, let's see. Did Ayler win a cup? Uh, I don't think he has. And Meyer hasn't won a cup, has he? Uh, not yet. So far as I know, Michael Bennett may be the only West Coaster who's who's pulled it off. Where is can I? I say I was going to look something up. Where can I go? I guess I can go to the regular search bar, right? I was going to see how much money KVD won on the on the FLW side. But I don't see a listing for his, just his stuff. Photos. Huh. I'll be darn. It's an article. Van Damme leads into semifinal round of $500,000 Walmart tour season opener. And that must have been back when every, every uh, product in Walmart was sponsoring and giving up money left and right. Oh, boy. If the first one, yeah. oh, I think that's back when they used to zero the weights. 
Remember they used to do that? Yeah. Fish two days, then zero. Yeah. Fish two more days. Yeah. I'm looking back, Dave, at the 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 cup that Gagley already won. His four, his uh, four day total was fifty one two. So you may be on something there, buddy. All right. I have to edit my weight. No, no, I don't need that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I may uh, I may go down to about let's just say let's just say uh, I'm gonna lowball you. I think. Oh yeah, this is back when everybody was with let's see. The FLW Alpo Pets Tour. Oh, the sponsors are Alpo Pet Foods, BF Goodrich, Black & Decker, Chevy, Shit, <laughs> Sitgo, Coleman, Ener- Energizer, Everstark, Frito-Lay, Fuji, Kellogg's, Land O'Lakes, Lawrence, Mercury Marine, Minn Kota, Pepsi, Plano, Wrangler, Weed Eater, Walmart, Visa, U.S. Bank, Timex, Snickers. That's back when everybody had a food wrap button. Remember yeah, all them Land of land definitely... Lakes and Snickers bars and... Everybody had something back then. Yeah, that's definitely back when things were really good. Yeah, that's <laughs> back when FLW was, was, was smoking. Yeah. Not anymore. Now when when the when the National Guard pulled out and all that money left, well that will hurt that hurt right there. Yeah, now they're they're more closer to the industry as far as their Yeah, goes. yeah, there's not, not as many non endemic anymore. Yeah. Yep. Well, been going about an hour and a half. What do you say we wrap say, it up with a call from Floyd? Did you find it? I think I found it, and I think you mentioned something in this email, in this voicemail, about this uh, Hoy Hyo Chukim. All right, whatever. well, we'll see. You find out. Let's find out. Let's get him on here. You know what Floyd needs to do, Matt? What's that? Floyd, Floyd needs to do a mic drop, but do a phone drop. Yeah. This is, he needs to have a sign-off. Yeah. 
You know, you, <laughs> I'm looking under in press releases, and I thought that that thing he's talking about is a bunch of them are going to Spain or somewhere to fish a deal, and I thought it would be under FOW's press releases on their uh, uh, website here, but it is not. We'll have we we'll dig into it. Maybe we can get some more info from Joe. Yeah. It's, uh, well, Mark so Rose sending some guys. Mark Rose was featured on the We Fish ASA podcast, and so was Brian Thrift. Huh? I thought we'd had him on here before. Guess we can't get any press. Um. Oh yeah. One last thing. Uh, you mentioned that our buddy Kurt Mazurk was going to be involved with something with Shimano. He is on a tour of the of the country right now in a Shimano truck and boat. And who did I tell you he was with? Was it Combs? He is with Keith Combs, and they are check, uh, proving to people the new Corrado is the bomb.com, and they're stopping at lakes and giving, like, sample tests and catches and stuff with a Corrado. And it's Mazurk and Combs riding around. Yes, sir. Did I read that Combs was involved in some kind of deal where he's going to try to catch all, like, nine different species of black bass? Maybe that's what the deal there is. Part of it. That's maybe what How about that? that? Yeah. And check this out, man. I don't know if it's the TOS IG Lives or not, but if you go to Bass, you'll get this link for Carhartt Fishing Gear. And if you click on the, uh, the infamous hat that I bought a couple months ago, I'm trying to scroll down here to it, and I'm going to tell you what the exact terminology about the hat says. I should have had this pulled up before, but I just saw that link. Out of stock, Matt. It is out of stock. The Carhartt Force Mandan Booney hat is out of stock. Which one's that? My, 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 my favorite new Carhartt gray hat that I wear. It's out of stock oh. now on Carhartt.com. So you made it popular. I'm, I'm not taking the, the credit for it, Matt, but I'm just saying it's a daggum comfortable hat. It seems like you liked it. I love it. It's durable. Nah. It's good quality. It's got comfort. Do they make it in orange? Uh, they do not on purpose. It is either in Carhartt tan or you can get it in gray. Okay. Yeah, gray, gray goes good with everything. Yeah, it's good news. All right, Matt, have, have you seen? Good to have you, have you seen the new uh, commercial running on ESPN about a dude in a Tennessee sweater and they're talking about college football, but he's a little bit nerdy. No, actually, I don't have satellite or cable, so uh, I haven't really had a chance to watch much on ESPN. If somebody has seen it, I just caught a little bit of it last night. Uh, it's I don't know if they're making fun of him or they're just kind of going along with him, but it's kind of weird. Are they making no, the dude in the sweater, he's kind of nerdy. And they're oh. kind of like saying, okay, buddy, all right. Because I think he's like saying, you know, uh, you know, we're going to win it. This year is our year, you know. Oh, yeah. So I've heard that a few times. Surely not. You'll have to show me that that commercial. I'll have to look that up. I'll have to see if I can record it. There you go. I'll back it up and then video it and send it to you. Huh. All right. Looking forward to that. It'll be funny to watch. Yeah. Well, I think that's it for me, Dave. And oh, well, me too, Matt. I think I'm. I think I'm done. I'm, I'm done as well. Yep. Uh, thanks to Jamie Hartman for being on the show. Jason Duran, Jason Baggett from Contingents and Bonus Loop. Looking forward to seeing what what's com- what's coming out with those guys, especially for next year. It sounds like they got a plan. Should be fun. If you want to call into the show, give us a call. We need some more uh, voicemails. We, you know, Floyd from New Market's good. Uh, the more the merrier. Call in, tell us how you're doing, what you're doing, what you're catching, and that's the phone number. Is six six one two six 
Mojo TOS. That's the only way I can remember it, Dave. There's too many sixes in there. Oh, it's full of sixes. Hang on, I'll tell you. I got it, I got it tagged here. Let me go down to my TOS. TOS rent line, 661-665-6867. Yep. So if, you, if you're skeptical about leaving it, we listen to all of them. 661-665-6867. Yep. So that should do it. Give us a call. Email us the outdoor scoreboard at gmail.com or look us up on Twitter at the outdoor score or we talk fishing. Just look up we talk fishing. Same thing for Instagram. We talk fishing or the underscore outdoor underscore scoreboard where Dave might uh, get the board, might put up some more funny memes. We've had some good ones I did, on there I, recently. I did, I did come out of my coma the other day, Matt, and come up with that spy bait one. I thought that spy bait one was pretty <laughs> decent. <laughs> that was a pretty good one. Yeah. Pretty I funny. thought that was a decent one. So, yep. and if you, did, right, well, if you didn't up. see huh. the latest, I happened to be in Lowe's last week, and I saw the mother load of the new Yeti bucket on sale. Oh yeah, them uh, thirty dollar buckets. Them thirty nine ninety nine buckets was on sale at Lowe's for two ninety eight. Better get them while they last. The only thing missing is a Yeti sticker, man. <laughs> Pretty much, slap you. A, yeah, buy you one of them twenty dollar Yeti decals. Yeah, buy you a decal, slap on there, and you can be all famous for your bucket. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, all right, Matt, let's shut her down then. All right. Dave, all right, have a good week. We'll talk to you guys next week.